Hi everyone, I'm Greg from The Laser Channel, where we learn, create, and share. In this video, I'm going to be sharing how to print using the QD Tech XSmart 3 3D printer. Welcome back, and thanks for joining me for another video on The Laser Channel. Today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the QD Tech XSmart 3. I've always been interested in 3D printers, but I did find them a little bit overwhelming at times, but this thing has proven to be very easy and very simple to use. Today's video is going to be three easy basic steps of going out on the internet, finding a 3D model, then using the application software that comes with the printer to make that file compatible with the printer. And then finally, we're going to place that file on the included USB drive, insert that into the side of the machine and start the print. My favorite and most reliable source for 3D models is a website called Thingiverse. I think there's a lot more out there, and if you know of some, please leave a comment down below so that I can check it out and other viewers can also check that out too. And I take a look inside here. This is the magic kitten that I'm going to be printing out today. When I click on that model, again, this is the magic kitten. It tells us the author and the date that this was loaded in. All I need to do is click on download all files. Again, there's no special login for this. Once the model's done downloading, I can go over to the QD Slicer software. Again, this is a software that comes for free with the QD Tech 3D printer. This is going to be the software that takes the model and creates a different file that is compatible with the printer itself. Again, going on the USB drive that will insert into the side. I'll take you on a quick tour of what this software looks like. The first thing that I wanna share with you is up in the corner here, there's three different modes that the software can be ran in. I'm going to keep it in simple because I am very new at 3D printing and I just want to be able to create a nice print off of this printer and the simple mode is going to be perfect for me. But feel free to choose whatever mode best fits your skill level. Below that is this area here, and this is what's going to make that model compatible specifically with the XSmart 3 3D printer that I have here. And that is the print setting that I have is 0.2 millimeters, and that will produce a fine build quality for this model. Just below print settings is the filament. I'm still using the sample roll that came with the machine. I've been able to do quite a few projects with that and I'm only about halfway through that sample roll. The filament, of course, is the QD PLA Rapido filament. I always recommend when starting out for best ease of use is to use the filament that comes from the manufacturer for maximum compatibility. Just below that, I select the printer that I have. Of course, we've been talking about the XSmart 3 printer. Now we're gonna loop back to supports and infill, but first I need to load in the model that I just downloaded. And I'll check that out by adding here. And here's the file, I'm going to open that up. And I can grab with my mouse and move the screen around here and we can check out this nice Halloween cat with a witch's hat. And I'll zoom in with my scroll wheel. It looks pretty cool. Uh, as long as I'm clicked on the model, we'll see that this other little sidebar menu pops up for object manipulation. Right now, the top line here position, we're roughly about in the middle of the build platter and that looks good. We'll also see that there's a scale factor and then the size to the real world. All right, now that's in millimeters and I like to switch that over two inches. That's just my personal preference. And when I move this build platter around so that the green arrow is pointing up for the Y axis here that is also color coded green, um, 
the height of the model is going to be just over one and a half inches. This is a nice size, but I wanna make it bigger, much bigger. In fact, I wanna make it twice as big. For that, I'm going to make sure that this padlock is in the closed position. And any one of these three spaces here, I'm going to just highlight it and to double the size, I'm just gonna tell it to make it 200% bigger. And because the padlock was closed, all the other size dimensions grew at that same 200% ratio. Now we'll take a look at this. This is looking much better. I like the size of that. And now I'm going to go back up here to supports. And if you're new to 3D printing, supports are going to be what the printer uses to support this, like the top of the hat that's overhanging the build pile. There's nothing underneath it. So it needs like a support or a structure underneath there to hold that up during the build process. I pull this menu down, I hit uh, supports on the build plate only, supports on enforcers only, and I'm not too sure, so I'm gonna tell it to put supports everywhere. If you're an expert user of 3D printing, let me know what your preference would be on this type of model. The infill is set to 15%. That's kind of the default on here, although I think I'd like to change that to 20%. Right now, this is all I needed to do for this model. So I'm going to tell it to slice now. And right now it's got this little think bar down here. And again, I'm on a lightweight computer here and it's still chugging through this pretty quickly. And then the last thing I need to do is this button down here at the bottom, export the G code. And here I am going to just type in video. And this is the large version of that. And I'll hit save. And now that finished saving it. I can now take the USB drive that came with the machine, put that into the computer. I'll paste that file onto the USB drive. And at any point, I can install the USB drive into the side of the machine. Here's a nice close up of this full color, high resolution touchscreen on the QD XSmart 3 machine. And here's the home screen. And we're going to go and find that file that we just put on that USB drive and that's going to be inside this folder. I put it inside the test folder and Magic Kitten for the video large and it will load that in. And here we've got a couple of uh, specifications and some numbers on the side here. The build time is going to be about an hour and a half. It's gonna use 32 grams of filament which is equal to about 10.7 meters of filament. And we do have the PLA uh, loaded in. We have the bed automatically leveling before the start of the machine. And I'm all set to hit the start button. Before I do that though, I do need to zoom back a little bit so that you can see. And that is to remove the top cover off the machine to allow any of the heat that's building up inside the build area to escape out. Uh, I read the manual after I had a couple failures and that cover keeps too much heat in and it can cause some issues. So uh, what better way to troubleshoot than to, you know, read the manual for the machine. With that fun little tour of the touchscreen complete, I'm going to get another camera set up right in front of the machine. I'll cue in some nice music and we'll watch a time lapse of this magic kitten being made. The print is complete and it took one hour and 32 minutes. Let's open the door and check this out for the very first time. 
I'll give this build plate a little bit of a bend and this will pop right off. And let's take a close up look before I get rid of any of the supports on the model. And just check out all of this detail across this model here. We've got, of course, all the build supports on the backside here and in between the feet. I'll take a few minutes off camera and just slowly pick away. They're stuck on, but in between the supports and the actual model, there's not a whole lot of bracing so that the supports come off very easily. With all the build supports removed, we now have this awesome looking model. This 3D printer has been an absolute blast to use. It's easy to use, the build time is very quick, and I get really great results off of it. I'd love to hear some of your ideas on some of the models you'd like to see built off of this machine. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. That helps me out, but more so it's a great way to connect content like this with great viewers like you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.